Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Data Exposed. I'm your host, Scott Klein, and with me today is Amit. Amit, how you doing? Good, how are you? So, uh, before we get started, because we're gonna, today we're going to talk about uh, HD Insight on Azure Data Lake Analytics, right? But uh, before we get to that, why don't you take a second to introduce yourself? Okay, so my name is Amit Kulkarni. I'm a program manager here in the big data team at Microsoft. Awesome. Uh, primarily focus on the data lake scenarios. Sweet. So, uh, thanks for coming. I, it was actually last, last minute, so I appreciate you stepping in. Sure thing. Um, so let's talk about uh, HDI, HD uh, Insight on Azure Data Lake Analytics. You know, what are the benefits? Why would we even consider doing something like that? And what, what does it give us? Sure. So before we dive deep into that question, let me just set the, the overall stage for what are the what is Azure Data Lake? Yep. Uh, and uh, how does HD Insight, Azure Data Lake Store play a part of it, right? Yep. So there are three services under the Azure uh, Data Lake umbrella. There is yeah. uh, Azure Data Lake Analytics, yep. Azure Data Lake Store, and Azure uh, HD Insight. So okay. HD Insight is our managed Hadoop service in the cloud. Yep. It's been out there for a couple of years. Uh, it's very popular out there. And so basically, if you want to come on Azure and say, I need a 10 node Hadoop cluster, we'll spin it up for you, we'll manage it for you, yep. and you can basically use the power of the cloud for running yeah, a Hadoop cluster. Because we've done, HD, you know, even before H, uh, sorry, Azure Data Lake Anal or Azure Data Lake itself was around, we've been able to do HD Insight, right? So I yep. think, why does, Putting it on top of Azure Data Lake Analytics, what you know, what does that give us? Sure. So, uh, I think uh, previously we had uh, HD Insight run on uh, Azure Blob Storage. So Azure Blob Storage yep. is our generic uh, storage on Azure. Yep. So you can use it for a heterogeneous set of scenarios, yeah. uh, all the way from backing MySQL database to yep. uh, storing pictures, all of these scenarios, yep. right? Uh, so we built Azure Data Lake Store, which is the service on which the Azure HD Insight uh, will work, not Azure Data Lake Analytics. So the Data Lake Store is a, a specialized store that is optimized for uh, analytics scenarios. Right, okay. And given that HD Insight, a lot of the things we do in HD Insight are uh, all analytics. It makes sense. It makes sense yeah. to build it on top of the Data Lake Store. So when you run HD Insight on top of the Data Lake Store, it runs in the most awesome way, and you get the benefits of all the capabilities of the right. Data Lake Store. Can you give us just like a 30 second, you know, you and I understand it, but can yeah. you, for those that don't, sure. can you give us a 30 second synopsis of the differences between, yes, you know, I, you know but pr prior to Azure Data Lake, I could spin up an HD Insight cluster and point it to a blob storage, right? But yeah. What's the difference between blob storage now and Azure Data Lake storage? Yeah. Azure Data so, Lake Store. So like I said, Azure Data Lake Store is optimized for analytics. So you can store all types of data in the Data Lake Store. Mm -hmm. It's basically your HDFS type distributed file system in the cloud. Better performance, better scale. Better over, performance, over better blob scale. Storage. There are no limits to scale. You can accounts can grow really right. uh, long. We can there's no limits on individual file sizes. We ourselves tested uh, petabyte uh, size files, <laughs> oh, yeah. so yeah. Uh, it is right. it is built for incredible scale for running really large, bigger, better, faster workloads on Hadoop. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is it makes sense to say I'm going to create my HD Insight cluster in Azure Data Lake because it's Azure simply because of the better repository. Yeah. I, I guess another way to say it is I'm going to use Azure Data Lake Store to build my enterprise wide okay. uh, data warehouse. Uh, and uh, store all sorts of analytics data there. Okay. Once your data is in the data lake store, then you can connect a variety of different processing engines, be it Azure Data Lake Analytics, okay. HD Insight, yep. Spark, uh, any workloads running in IaaS on yep. top of this analytics data that lives in the data lake store. Okay, perfect, mm -hmm. awesome. And now, uh, <clears throat> when I, like, and you said you're gonna show a demo how to get it set up, and I'm looking forward to that. Yep. Uh, is it, like uh, before, it would say, "Hey, when I spin up my HD Insight cluster, you know, where's my where, where's my data coming from? Is it really, you know, as simple as going, still put spin up my HD Insight cluster, and instead of pointing it to Blob Storage, I'm now pointing it to Azure Data Lake." Yeah, it's just as simple, if not simpler. Okay. Uh, and uh, HD Insight clusters can read data either from the Blob Storage or the Data Lake Store as well. So, so you st you could still point it to a Blob Storage. Yeah, right? absolutely. Okay. All right, mm. sweet. All right, is it demo time? Yeah, let's do it then. All right, so uh, here uh, I have a data lake store set up. Uh, we have uh, done other videos where we show how you can uh, get yep. on Azure, set up a new data lake store, etc. Yep. So we yep. are not going to go in that area. Uh, so let's go look at the one down here that's called ADLS demo. Okay. Uh, we are going to go inside it and look at the data stored in there in, using the data explorer. And this is basically my data lake store account with all sorts of files and folders in here. So uh, I've loaded the New York City taxi data in here, a yep. uh, bunch of data sets uh, here. And uh, 
what what I want to show here is that uh, basically once you have the data lake store set up, you can load massive amounts of data here, petabytes yep. uh, in in scale. Yeah, like we're seeing here, which is I don't think is possible in in blob storage. You've got you know. 2.49 gigabyte file sizes, right? Yeah, That's this it. particular one is a really small one, but you could go like <laughs> yeah. really big sizes. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, for you know, most, yeah, most people, that's like, oh, that's, you know, okay, cool. All right, so now we are going to try to create a HD inside cluster that talks to data, uh, data that's sitting in this uh, account. Okay. So, so we're going to click new, and we're going to choose uh, data plus analytics, and HD insight. Here I'm creating a cluster name, so let's type like ADLS channel line. Yep. And you gotta choose which subscription it is in, and yep. then you gotta figure out which cluster type it is. I'm gonna choose Hadoop. Uh, you wanna choose Hadoop 2.6 for now. We are right now in preview for the data lake store. Okay. Uh, so that's the version it works with. Uh, soon it will be available for uh, the 2.7.1 or HDI 3.4 version. Okay, cool. Uh, but right now it's on 2.6. So 2. if 6. you're doing, you're saying if, if we're doing Azure Data Lake Store HD Insight, we need to do 2.6. Correct. Okay. That's right. All right. For now. For I think, now. Yeah. yeah. Later on, everything will work uh, as we get closer okay. to our general availability. Okay. So you choose uh, what what type of a cluster it is. Uh, you can choose applications. Uh, it's not particularly interesting for us for now, so we'll skip yep. that one. Uh, you've got to set up some credentials for the cluster. So here I'm going to just choose the admin password. And then you can also choose an SSH user. And I'm going to also put some password for it. Yep. Is that, is the SSH, SSH username, is that required to to create the cluster? Uh, I don't think it is required, uh, but you typically need it to uh, do SSH, SSH into yeah, the cluster. Yeah, yep. okay. So it's generally a good practice to all set it all up. Right, okay. Uh, so then you choose the data source here. This is where the things get interesting. So far I did nothing that was out of the ordinary. Right. It was how you would Standard, create yep. HD inside clusters yep. in the past, right? Yeah. Uh, so here you, you can choose which uh, storage account, which blob storage account uh, you want to connect this cluster to. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pick uh, one of uh, the ones I have in this subscription. Also conveniently called ADLS demo. <laughs> And okay. choose a default container. So even this part is the same as how you used to create HD inside clusters yep, before. Yep, yep. So now things get interesting, right? Uh, so you gotta, we have this new setting down here called cluster AAD, which is Azure Active Directory Identity, mm -hmm. and this is what allows this cluster to talk to the data lake store. Ah, okay. So when you go here, you have a choice. You can choose a uh, an existing Azure Active Directory service principle. Mm -hmm. or you can create a new one. So the service principle is what the cluster runs as and accesses the data lake store. So Is it uh, an account? It's so an account in Azure Active Directory, okay, yep. just like uh, users, users yep. except it's designed for like headless services. Gotcha, okay. And so we have a convenient way to create a new one here if you want. And uh, I'm going to just show one like uh, channel 9 SPI, let's see. And yeah, you can create a certificate right here in line. And so what it did here is it just created a new service principle identity for you in the yep. directory. Okay. And that can we go back to that because there was an expiration date on, on that. Yep. Is that significant? Like um, uh, this is the expiration date. So when you create a service principle identity, it is typically a headless user that gets created yeah. with a certificate as its credentials. Okay. So this over here just says what is the duration of that certificate. So you can always choose a longer or shorter based on your enterprise So in, in a year from now, uh, will we have to go in and just re redo that certificate? Yeah, you can put in a new certificate okay. or you can drop the cluster, create a new one. You have several choices over okay. there. All right. All right. All right so now uh, once you uh, create the service principal identity, uh, you can basically manage access to ADLS uh, right here. So this is what the cluster will run as, uh, the yeah, HD okay. inside cluster. And so for this service principle, you got to give this access to your data lake store. So I'm going to choose the ADLS demo account here and say I want this service principle to read, write, and execute, basically do everything with this account. Okay. And right in line. Yeah, okay, and, and the ADLS demo, that's the Azure Data Lake store that we had looked at before. Exactly. Right. Okay, yep. 
and uh, you also have the choice of downloading the certificate for this account that you just created. Okay. Now, if you have a SPI, a service principal entity that you already have around, then you can just use existing and uh, upload oh, the okay. certificate for it. So you have okay. both choices there. Okay. Okay. And now you, once you finish this, you are in business. Uh, okay. Once, uh, once you set up the identity, you can then go back and finish up setting up your cluster and create it. So okay. once you click this create, we all know it takes a couple of minutes to yep. spin up the cluster. And so we'll not really try to create this cluster here. We'll just look at the one that I have created just like this. Yep. So in that blade, we, we configured store uh, Azure Blob Storage yep. and uh, Azure Data Lake Store. Correct. Right? Do we need both or can we do one or the other? Or? Yeah, so, so today at this point of time uh, when we are in preview, we need both. Gotcha. Uh, okay. And going forward, Azure Data Lake Store will be the only store that will be uh, required. Supported. Okay, required. Okay. Yeah, we will always support both, but right. that's the only one that will. So be we'll required. have an option to go. No, I still want to use Blob Storage. Yeah. Or, okay. Exactly. Right. Okay. Okay. So then uh, I'm just going to get out of this spot and then go back to uh, this other HD Insight cluster that I already have yep. created. Okay. It's called ADLS Demo, and I have also SSH into it right here. Okay. And so what I'm going to show you here is uh, that. Once this cluster is uh, configured, you can basically go and access the storage as if it was a Hadoop storage attached to your HDFS. Oh, so your, your, your HDFS. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm going to run this simple HDFS command over here that, uh, that is basically HDFS DFS LS, which uh, yep. enumerates the directory. Okay. And uh, what, what you see over here is the path to the ADL uh, account, yeah. right? So this is the ADLS demo account, and as you can see, you have all these uh, oh, uh, folders and these are, here. And these are the files that we looked at before. Exactly. The portal, right? okay. So as an example, the NYC taxi yep. is, is right here. So now this cluster is wired up to talk to the Azure Data Lake Store account. And now you can pretty much do all sorts of Hadoop things on top of uh, uh, data that is stored in your data lake. So as an example, uh, we can run pig scripts or we right. can run hive scripts. You can run discp, uh, which is a built-in Hadoop command okay. to like move data between HDFS-like sources. Yep. You can use scoop. You can use Uzi. Anything that is basically available in your HD inside cluster is now av available for you on top of the data lake, uh, data lake store. store. Account. Uh, <coughs> can I do all that through SSH here, or can I do it through Hi, or, or, or through PowerShell? Or? You, yeah, you can do it through all avenues. So okay. you can e either do it through SSH, you can use Ambari and use the Hive views yep. to run it right there in the UI. Okay. I'm a command line person, so I like yeah. to SSH in there <laughs> and right. like do this stuff. Well, because like, <laughs> and the reason I ask is because you know typically in, we can go into the portal, go into the data dashboard, right, Hive queries there, right, yep. and that pulls. So I'm assuming I can almost do the same thing. It's just pointing now to HD, uh, uh, to Azure Lake Store, yep. right? So and, same thing. And and the other point I want to note is once you set up the uh, cluster with the service principal identity, mm -hmm. it can not only just access this one data lake store, but any data lake store that you have that has that is configured for access for that service principle, you can access yeah. just by giving the right path. Right. Uh, so in the portal, you said, I want read, write, execute. Yep. So if you had done other read, write, execute to other Azure Data Lake stores. You could access you, those, as, those well. as well. Exactly. OK. So now we are going to go to this folder, and I'm going to kick off this pig script over here called cooktaxidata.pig. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm just going to type pig minus x tez, which is my execution engine. And I'm going to kick this off here. And so while this is running, I'm going to quickly look at the pig script in another console. And so this is my pig script. And all that you have to like sort of note here is we have a very simple load statement here. Mm -hmm. And that is pointing to a file that sits in my data lake store account. So the I simply start the path with ADL, which is Azure Data Lake yep. colon slash slash. And this is the name of my account, ADLS demo. And then basically, this is the sub path all the way underneath. Right. Okay. Right? So it's as simple as just setting the right path up. And then I'm just doing normal pig stuff. Like I'm going to limit, filter, load. Uh, I'm loading a bunch of other uh, ADL files, all, and then storing my output finally all the way back into uh, ADLS. Okay. As well. Okay. So here I'm just using uh, this as if this was HDFS. So instead of yep. typing HDFS colon slash slash, I type ADL colon slash slash. Right. Okay. And once this is done, uh, everything is all wired up as we saw. And so here the pick job has finished. And if you look at the output here. It read, uh, I guess, 90,000 records from this one file. 
and uh, six records from each from these two files and then store 10,000 in this other file by filtering out some. Wow. So basically once this is set up, you are, you are in business. Your HD Insight cluster can uh, use all sorts of Hadoop applications yeah. and interact with data that lives in the data lake store. That's awesome. And it really wasn't that difficult to set up and configure. It's, right? it yeah, was, absolutely. I, you just right. set up your service principal identity and you're good to and, go. And you're good to go. And if, if you've done HD Insight on Blob Storage, you're, like you said, just set up your HD Insight cluster on Azure Data Lake Store and Correct. you're good yeah, to go. Yeah, and if you've set it up and if you have some experience running it on Blob Storage, uh, basically there also you use the was b colon slash yeah. Yeah, that's if you go back to your thing instead of ADL, what was it uh, instead of yeah? If this ADL was a blob storage file, typically you would interact. The B, right? Exactly. And here you just do an ADL. Okay. Yeah. So you switch the prefix, set up the right path, and your cluster yeah, and, is ready to Yeah, and so the go. learning curve from going really isn't that right? Yeah. It, it, there isn't one almost. There's nothing. You just have to set it up, set it up yeah, and yeah. use the right paths in your right. application. And the benefits are, you know, uh, better scalability, better performance. Yeah, unlimited right? scale unlimited, basically. Yeah. You can load as much data as you want in this one account. You can yeah. run as big of a workload as you want on top of this account. That is fantastic. I really mm -hmm. love that. Um, and so from here, and at this point, um, I could still, I could still use. Um, like I like to use PowerShell, like you know, like command line PowerShell to spin up and tear down my cluster. I could still sure. do the same thing. Yeah, you right? can do all of these things. Okay. You can uh, use an ARM template to set up your yeah. cluster. Okay. Uh, all of those capabilities all still exist. We've updated okay. all the avenues to create HD inside clusters yeah. awesome. uh, to work with ADLS. All right, this is a great, in, uh, thank you. This is a fantastic intro into AD, AD, uh, HDI on uh, Azure Data Lake Store. I think fantastic. So yep. I think, you know, I'd love to, you know, have you come back and let's do a little deeper dive into in some Absolutely. deeper type It'd be fantastic. Yeah, this is available today in yep. uh, East US 2 in preview, so go try it out. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. So this is in preview yep. and only available right now in East US? Yes, right. Okay. So today it's available only in East US 2. We are working on rolling it out into okay. other regions, awesome. other geographies. Okay. Area. Good, good yeah. to know. <laughs> All right. Amit, thank you so much for coming. Okay, great. Appreciate thank you very it. much. We'd like to have you back. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.